everybody feeling well? I have a few announcements. First of all, the last Sunday in October, we'll have a potluck, Pastor Appreciation Potluck. So that's the last Sunday in October. You know, that only count. What other announcements do we have this morning? Patty. Youth Sunday is the first Sunday in November, and I need all the kids to be here next Sunday and the Sunday after so that we can practice. All right. Any particular time or just regular time? Sunday school time. Okay. Regular yeah. time. A couple of announcements I'd like to point out in the bulletin first. Victoria Fire and Rescue uh, needs some uh, volunteers for a mock accident. That they're going to have. Uh, that's the announcement that's in the bulletin. And then Williamsburg County Ministry Brunswick Student Fundraiser is October the 26th. Any other announcements? Trunk or treat. Um, we decided on a theme. Is it Mario Brothers? Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. And um, so still keep the candy or little, you know, something we can hand out. Last year we handed out, um, I think there were over 2,000 kids. Um, we ran out of candy, what, two or three times? <laughs> we probably had to send Pastor K to Don. So we, we want to make sure we have enough for all the kids. So we've, I've gotten a good amount so far. If, just, if you grab something, just bring it in, drop it off here or out in the front. And then um, we decided to bring back the Thanksgiving community meal, and it will be Tuesday, November 26th. Um, I've got sign-up sheets. If we can get, you know, donations, we're going to have typical things, turkey stuffing, gravy, potatoes, mac and cheese rolls, pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie, brownies, or cookies. If you are willing to make it and bring it in, um, we, we're going to use the warmers. Um, if you want, like, a foil pan, you know, we'll be glad to supply you one you know, so you don't worry about getting your casserole dish back or whatever. But I've got sign-up sheets. Um, I'll leave them up here today, and then I'll put them some back in the back or something the fellowship hall just it's you can go on there i've got one for each food item put your name and how many of what you want to bring all right fantastic support that any other announcements and also the upper room for november and december is available so you can use this for your views yeah now today is esther's birthday so we got to sing mm -hmm. Suffers us gently leading, guiding, and blessing. We praise you for your love, O oh Lord, and your faithful presence in our lives. I pray this morning, may your spirit move in our hearts and minds, O oh God, that you worship together. Examine our attitudes and actions, lay bare the things we need to confess, challenge us with your word, and guide us on the path that leads to life. For we are your people, called by your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
invite you all to our close of worship. Please stand if you're able. God calls the lost, the least, and all who long for all. God calls to be wander from bad judgments for us and grace to give us to him and give him. God called and welcomed us back to worship this day. Let us celebrate and rejoice in God's presence forever. Let us worship God together. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 422. Jesus dying or victorious love. Let us sing together. Wash out, like your red 
as she owns ten silver coins and loses one of them. One light of lamp and sheep the house searching her home carefully until she finds it. When she, when she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Celebrate with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Life changing God, by your love you have touched us and transformed us to reach out to all who hunger for what only you can give. This moment I pray again to you to bless our ears and heart with the same hunger for your word. Be heart changing and life changing word. Spirit of God, meet us here and shape us to continuously learn from you and dedicate ourselves to knowing and living the true words of your love. Make the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our believer, our rock, peace and joy. So one day, a good friend of mine shared this story on his Facebook page. And once I read the story, I had to think about love and joy again. This morning, I, I want to share with you all about Christian love and what happens when we love one another. And my friend and his wife live, in a, live with a little dog named Eco. And one of the major challenges they have to deal with on a daily basis is her shedding. Eco has a silky coat with smooth hair and she sheds a lot every day. So they have to begin the entire house all the time and always prepare a scotchy water to remove her hair from their clothes. And even they carry a couple of doors their car. <coughs> I believe if you live with a dog, you should understand what it means, right? And my friend said, honestly, it's annoying sometimes. And I thought to those who have a high standard of cleanliness and hygiene, it could be a real challenge. Anyhow, one day my friend got a call from his mom in Korea. She said she wanted to visit and stay with them for a month. At first, when he heard from his mom coming, he jumped around the house because he couldn't see her for over two years. In addition to that, she, he was so glad thinking he's able to eat a lot of good, delicious Korean food, mom cooking. However, after hung up the phone, then he told his wife about her coming. Then she got concerned about one matter. Because his mom is the person who has the highest standard of cleanliness and hygiene. It meant she was going to meet their donkey Eko for the first time. They were so worried. So they agreed that before she arrived, they not only just sanitized the house, but also almost sterilized it from top to bottom. And finally the day came. And she she arrived, his mom arrived. As soon as she entered the house, he could see that she was scanning every corner of the house. Then that the Eko came to greet her, right? And his mom immediately noticed her shedding. Then my friend and his wife were so scared, as we expect, waiting for her judgment, her body. But surprisingly, she was all right with that. And even she had such a good time with Eko during her entire stay. And what happened to her? What in the world made her be okay with Eko's chatting? It was because his mom fell in love with little dog. It was the power of love, I guess. To be honest, of course, she complained about her 
sharing some time with us. But above all, she really enjoyed staying with Hiko. Then later, every time he talks with his mom over the phone, she always asks him, how's Hiko doing? More surprisingly, his mom is even considering adopting a dog. And this fact grew up my friend and his wife so much. That love changes many things. What do you think? Love changes many things. Did you ever experience this type of transforming love in your lives? We know love changes things and transforms people. Once his mom began to love Echo, the little doggy, the joy of companionship she found with the dog overcame the annoyance of picking up her hairs all day long. And truly, love has power, power that enables us to find joy over judgment. In today's gospel story, Jesus is hanging out with sinners. The so-called sinners are gathered around him and listening to him. Looking at this, the Pharisees and the scribes, the religious leaders in Jesus' days, grumble. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. They don't understand Jesus' behavior. But here, the question is, doesn't Jesus know that the people he's hanging out are sinners? I'm so sure he was knowing it. Even he was knowing much better than the Pharisees and the scribes about their sins. But in the story, Jesus is different. The Pharisees and the scribes only judge those people as sinners. And that is it. But for Jesus, even though he knows and judges their sins, he still stays with the sinners. How come? It is because Jesus loves them. With his love, Jesus finds joy over judgment, finds a way of joyful relationship beyond judgmental exclusion. Then to the Pharisees and the scribes, Jesus begins to teach with two parables, which we learn today, about this love, finding joy over judgment. In the first story, a shepherd leads his flock flock of 99 to look for one single lamb that is lost. He searches until he finds, and when he does, he carries that one lamb home on his shoulders. He invites his friends and neighbors over and throws a party to celebrate. The shepherd says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my ship that was lost. In the second story, second parable, a woman loses one of her ten silver coins. Immediately she lights up a lamp and sweeps her entire house, looking carefully for the coin until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors to celebrate. Then she says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. This parable clearly teaches us today with his faithful, compassionate love, Jesus finds the lost, the sinners like us. And here in this place today, is there anyone who can confidently say, I am blameless, I'm not a sinner at all? I think no one can say that. Jesus knows and judges our sins, but above all, he still loves us. And this love changes many things. Although we sometimes go astray like a ship and get lost like a coin, Jesus goes, finds us again, turns us back to his love, and rejoices with us. And until he finds us, he desperately searches for us like a good shepherd. And like the woman sweeping her entire house. His labor, his love never never gives us up for our sins. Whether his love always looks for the joy of having us back. The joy of acceptance and relationship, the joy of forgiveness and salvation, 
over judgmental rejection and punishment. And this is why our Lord Jesus is the good news for us. Friends, who needs this good and joyful news? But where can we find this good news over sin and joy over judgment? The answer is very simple and straightforward. We should know and accept the love of Jesus over our sins first. And we should love like Jesus. And also we need to know that this love isn't just a practical way of deep Christian living. It is a work of Jesus and a work of God's kingdom. By loving others, we experience the real joy of heaven. I mean, by this love, we are enabled to foretaste the kingdom of joy, the God. Verse 7 says today, there will be more joy in heaven. There will be more joy in heaven. And verse 10 says, when we love and find someone who is lost, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels. I know as humans, we can be judgmental to one another, and pick up small things from one another, we often say, that's wrong. Why does he or she does that? do that? That's not right. Yes, it happens often for us to be judgmental. And I know we come to church to be better human beings. So sometimes, as we try to be good, we apply a quite high moral and ethical standard to one another. However, in this way, the church can be, become a judgmental place. And we, if we stop there, if we stop judging others, and don't do more than that, we become just like the same as other group of people, just the same as the grumbling Pharisees and the scribes in today's Gospel story. Exactly two weeks ago, I attended the Go Tell America Crusade rally with some of our church members. And while worshiping God with other believers, I was so uplifted and impressed by the choir singing. And the preachers also excellent in delivering the goodness of Christ, preaching about Jesus' searching for the lost. About a week later, I received a list of names from the, the Crusade organizing group who attended the event and prayed with their, their staff on that night. Especially the least specified who accepted Christ Jesus as their Savior during the event. But you know what? What I was really surprised was that in the least, I could find joy and excitement because I could see more names who are willing to turn back to Christ again and to rededicate their lives to the Lord. Just like the lost sheep and the lost coin found in the Bible story today. And once they were with their shepherd, and once they, they belonged to the Lord, but they have become, a, become lost and wandered off, that after they realized and heard that Jesus isn't judgmental with them, he said that Jesus has been really looking for them, and he's, he would be joyfully welcoming and celebrating their returns, because he loves them. In the scripture passage today, the shepherd says, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life, and also the woman who found her lost coin says, Joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. In friends of Christ, how would you respond to this word of Jesus? How would you respond to this word of Jesus? It is to love like Jesus. We should love each other with a love over sin. And the love finding joy over judgment. Even though we see others' mistakes, faults, and shortcomings, even though we sometimes get hurt by others' wrongdoings, please remember, remember, 
we all call to love one another over our judgment. We are called to rejoice with one another as we continue to follow Jesus together by loving each other. And with our love, let us make our church a place of joy. The joy of acceptance and relationship, the joy of forgiveness and salvation, and let us make our church a place for sinners where all can come and listen to Jesus, a place for the lost where all are found by Jesus again. This morning I just want to remind you one thing. When we were yet sinners, Jesus loved us first, found us, and shared the heavenly joy with us. And in spite of all our sins, He still loves us. No matter who we are, and no matter what we bring before Him. What a grace it is. What a grace it is. May the love of Christ be with you right away. And give you strength to love one another. Amen. Amen. Our centering him as hymn number 453, More Love to Be of Christ. We'll be singing verse 1 to 4. Would you stand if you're able? is a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. May the act of worship let us now return to God, our offering. Thank you. 
friends who join their prayer for our offerings, for our church community and friends. Gracious God, we thank you for the measure of faith you have given to each of us, increasing us generosity, compassion, and love, so we may continue to be your body in and, in and for the world. With thanksgiving, we pray in the name of Christ. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for your leading voice and your goodness and faithfulness for us throughout the day. This time we come before you, depending on your unfailing love and making grace with prayer of your people. We pray for those who are sick, informed and recovery. Nancy Bridgeport, Tommy Height, Kate Davis, Jordan Johns, Eric Edwards, Karen Skinner, Carol Edwards, Robbie Brown, and their families. God, you give them peace and help them experience your presence as they are going through this difficult time. Your healing brings them back from weakness and fear into renewed strength and confidence. And Lord, we ask you to give them patience and encouragement as experiencing your restoring and healing power. Heavenly Father, we lift up our members staying in their homes and tips, ladies. Ann Apperson, Frank Warren, John Spencer, Tom Nelson, and David Hall. And Father, continue to watch over them. And continue to shower them with your grace and go touch them with your unfailing love that you have promised to be with your people always. Merciful God, we acknowledge the unspoken prayers among us. Because you have promised us that you would be God for all and your love and grace of them. We trust that you have been already working in their lives and touching their problems. Continue to leave them in your good hands, God. And take them to the green pastures and still waters so that they can feel safe. And they can have peace in your strong arms. Loving God, giver of life and love, we continue to pray for those who lost their families, homes, and businesses by the storms. So we lift up our prayers to you, God. Hold close all of them to you. And hear the cries of the people there. We pray that you would bring healing to those suffering from the destruction and comfort to those mourning the death. The Lord Jesus, move all of us to respond with hearts of love, acts of service, and generous giving. God, hear our petitions. Our friends, let us take a moment to center ourselves and come closer to our gracious and loving God and seeking for His comforting peace and loving grace in silence. Father, we ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. My friend, let us continue to pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us when he was here on earth by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. The dying is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn.
is hymn number 452, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. We'll be singing verse 1, 2, and 4. Please stand if you're able. Thank you. 